It's like a loop machine. Welcome back to the BCSN Sports Rap Show, Week 8 edition. And on the Versus Simulator Sports Hotline, we have Coach Sean Quinn, the Savannah State Tigers, Savannah State University. They're off to a fantastic 4-3 and three start this year after a couple of uh, disappointing years, the last their last couple of years in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. They now compete in the SIAC, South, Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. So, uh, Coach Quinn, how are you doing this, uh, this lovely afternoon? I'm doing great here in beautiful Savannah, enjoying uh, another great day in a great city. Just got off the practice field here, getting ready for a big game this weekend against Albany State, and excited to be back at home after being on the road for five weeks straight. All right, and uh, I guess I ought to, should have started it off by saying happy homecoming to you. Also, this is Savannah State's homecoming this uh, this particular weekend. So, uh, any festive? Do coaches get to enjoy homecoming, uh, or, or you know, I know you have stuff that you have to do with the alumni and and, and the uh, the board of board of directors or however however it's phrased at your particular university. But do you actually get to really enjoy it, or is it just another week for you? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, we want them all to, every every week to be like homecoming for us with a great crowd and people excited. And, uh, you know, for us, I mean, the, the, the product is enjoy Saturday night after a win, and this is a great town to enjoy a win after a, a Saturday win. And, uh, you know, our focus is always on to the next one, win, lose, or draw. So we won Saturday night and got back from Atlanta late and got right into the next one here. And it's just kind of that, as a coach, you savor the victories, but you get on to the next one in a hurry and, you know, Homecoming means a lot to everybody else, but for us it's just another opportunity. And as I told our team, it's the biggest game on our schedule because it's the next one, and the next week will be the biggest one. So, um, you know, excited, always glad. We want to put a good product out for our former players and for our alumni, but that that's always every week we want it that way. So we're just glad to be home. We've been on the bus and been on a bunch of trips for five weeks straight, and my coaching career, I can tell you, I've never had five weeks in a row on the road, so I'm excited to get back home and enjoy some home cooking and sleep in our own beds. All right, and you you talk about that trip to Atlanta. Savannah State defeated Clark Atlanta University last week in Atlanta in overtime. Uh, Savannah owns the state, owns the city of Atlanta, going two and zero in Atlanta, defeating both Morehouse and Clark in Atlanta. But uh, this game went to overtime. Uh, kind of give us a, a quick recap as a coach of what you saw last week against Clark, uh, hopefully what you learned and some of the adjustments you think you is going to need to make based upon that particular victory, Coach. Well, we're glad to get a win. We didn't play our best ball, but we found a way to win it when it counted, and uh, I give that credit to the kids and the coaches, and it was a monsoon, and give Clark a, a, a lot of credit. They played their butts off, and they're like us, a brand-new coaching staff trying to change a culture, and those guys have done a great job there, and it was a back-and-forth game, which we had control, and we gave up a block punt there in the fourth quarter. It kind of flipped the mojo, and fortunately we were able to reestablish the, the momentum and, and take it into overtime, and then we scored, and we were able to, to get a fourth down stop. And it was big. Just winning is huge for us. There just haven't been a lot of wins here over the last 20 years, and so to find a way to win – when all the things were against us, I, I give a lot of credit to our players and uh, just believing and not quitting in the process. So there were a lot of forks in that road on Saturday where they could have quit and, and turned it down and didn't. And so, you know, you're not always going to play your very best. And if you can find a way to win and, and still play better, that's exciting as a coach. And we, again, got a lot of improvement. We've only got six or seven seniors, and, and we've only got, I think, three that start for us. So, you know, with a young team to find a way to win some games, um, you know, that, that's a hard game because we knew – Obviously, we're playing a really good football team this week. Um, and so, you know, it was a challenge, and our guys found it. So excited. And we got a ton of guys from Atlanta, so I know they were excited and uh, to get a win and go 2-0 and in Atlanta this year. So good one for us. All right. And, uh, you know, you talk about this year. Uh, just just in general, talk about your season uh, thus far. You're, once again, you're off to a 4-3 and three start on this particular year, Coach. 
Well, you know, uh, the guys have battled. We've been in, uh, you know, five of the, you know, six, six of the seven games. We had the ball at the end of the game to win it. Uh, start off the first game of the year and went for two to win against a Florida Tech team that's really good. And then we were at Charleston Southern with the lead in the fourth. And we lost those two and then played a really good Alcorn team when we didn't play our best ball. But we're 3-0 and in the league, and, and we're in first place right now in the East. And so we're in a great side of the division. And um, so we our guys have battled, and, and we've got a brand-new system, brand-new offense, brand-new defense, totally different culture. And, you know, it's been a lot. It's been a tough road, you know, going from 60-something scholarships to 30, and the kids have done a great job. And, you know, we've had some tough um, tough situations with five on the road, and the guys have battled all week and, and done what we've asked them to do, and they've been a fun bunch to coach. And, you know, went from a spread system to the option, which is night and day. And uh, so they've done a great job adapting and, and just being different. You know, we went from not hitting and where we tackle and we go live and practice all the time. And so it's a different way of doing things, and the kids have made it a lot of fun and really – our job here is about the kids, and we, you know, we know the, that we're the front porch of this university, and we got a new president, new AD, and our job is to help, you know, our school and create a new image by winning and, and doing some things here to facilitate Savannah State's rise, not only in athletics but also uh, redo the university as we we move forward in a new phase at our university. And uh, talk about the transition in the offense. You've gone from what pretty much everybody is running now, the spread or the spread option uh, with with a bunch of uh, R- with a bunch of RPO for your for your quarterback. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the guys who returned to the program were recruited for that system with the previous uh, coaching staff to your system uh, with with the triple option. Which is old school football, kind of, kind of the football that I like to see. You know that old Oklahoma Sooner, Nebraska from the seventies and eighties type uh, ball. Probably right now, the few teams that are running that, or uh, you know, Army is running that, and a few other people along those lines. But nobody, nobody runs it, and you're not even getting that athletes in high school who are still running that type of system. So talk about finding kids, the transition to that system, and then finding kids who are, can run that type of system mm-hmm. in such a short period of time. Well, here's, the, here's, here's our outlook on it. When I took the job over, I knew we didn't have the quarterbacks to be in the spread system. We were in the wrong system for what our quarterbacks do. And if we had Deshaun Watson, we would be a spread team. But we're going to do what we got to do to win. And at, at, when I took the job, I said, they said, hey, what are we going to run? I said, do whatever gives us the best chance to win. That's what we're going to do. And having been in the option systems at Georgia Southern, I, I worked for Jeff Munkin at Army. I played at Carson Newman. And I've been in part of seven playoff teams. The end goal here – is for us to win the SIAC and then get in the playoffs. We feel like we can be a regional power like Valdosta, like West Georgia, and we're in a great location. And to get in the playoffs, we don't want to be the same thing as everybody else. Everybody else is spread. Let's be completely different. We get in the playoffs. I've been on option teams. You can make a run in the playoffs. And the goal here eventually is to win the whole thing, win a national championship. So, And everybody thinks I'm crazy, but we've got the, the setup. We've got the geographic location. And we want to be completely opposite of everybody else. And so just looking at it from big picture, we felt like we could come in here. We had a good defense coming back. We finished 18th in FCS football last year. And if we could run the football, control the clock, and win the turnover margin – which is something we struggle to do here. They've been spread for 20 years and had 20 losing seasons, so obviously that was time to do something different. And fortunately I got the opportunity to be a head coach, and and I knew this was something we could do. And it fits our skill set and fits our linemen and our recruiting model a whole lot better than what they've been doing here before. And, you know, like I look at Georgia Southern and the turnaround they made last year going from a two-win team to a 10-win team in 2018, we want to try to do the same thing here. And so, you know, there's a lot of great examples of winning, and um, I, I, I want us to win. And, Whatever gives us the best chance to do that's what we're going to do, and right now it's running the option. What do you think is probably the one or two biggest differences between the uh, the, sp- the spread option with the, with the RPOs and the traditional option? I just think the physicality and, and the toughness of it. Um, you know, we're giving up right now almost 100 yards less rushing a game because we defend the run in practice all the time versus, you know, I just think it's a different mindset. Um, I just, you know, obviously that spread RPO stuff works. A lot of people do it. Um, and to each his own, it just I just think for us what it does, it lets us practice in a different style and it lets us really play into the strength of our football team, which has been defensively to this point. And, you know, just lets us, you know, if we're playing a better team, we're able to, to, to manage the clock. If we're 
playing a team we're even or, or better than, we can really get the ball and be physical and control the tempo of the game. So um, the biggest thing to me is just the style in which you practice and just it helps your defense. Um, you know, a lot of times some of these high-scoring offenses, you're just bad on defense, and as a result, you know, you've got to score 50 every game to be competitive, whereas if you have a championship defense, in my opinion, you can be in every game winner, you know, week in and week out, even if your offense isn't scoring a ton of points. Look at the Patriots right now, and, uh, you know, as a defensive guy, I've always believed in it, and I always thought it was the toughest thing to defend. And, you know, um, obviously, like I said, if we've got a quarterback that can throw it phenomenally, we got one that can really run and is a good thrower, but he's a great runner. And it fits his skill set, and we're built the system around him, uh, Devon Givens out of Atlanta. So for us, you know, we've got to do what our quarterbacks can do, and, and we just want to be smart as coaches and put them in the best position to win. Um, and like I said, every system is different, and every, every place you've got different strengths. But it fits what our kids can do up front, and it fits our quarterback. And uh, speaking of Devon Givens, we're going to talk about him uh, in a few moments. But uh, you're, you're a defensive guy. You were the defensive coordinator on this staff last year, and your defense was number one in the BAC, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, before you guys moved down to Division Two. So uh, just kind of – Let's talk about the defense. Just talk about your defense in general right now, Coach. Um, you know, we got a lot of guys back. Last year we had um, a lot of freshmen play, and that was tough at the time. But, you know, those guys are veterans. So I think we had seven or eight starters coming back off last year's team. And um, we play a system real similar to Penn State. That's kind of the Penn State defense coordinator, Brent Prize, who I've worked under a number of years, and we run a very similar system to him. Um, and, you know, it's really kind of based off of three – three programs, Clemson, Virginia Tech, and Penn State, and it's, we run that same system. Um, it's a four-down system, and we get in some multiple fronts. But, uh, you know, we want to try to do the old adage is take away their best players and make them play left-handed and uh, stop people running the football and make them one-dimensional, and, and that's something we try to do every week. We know there may be some more yards through the air, but it's about scoring points and turnovers. And, uh, you know, if we can win the turnover battle, stop the run, win the rush, rushing battle on both sides of the ball, we got a chance to be in every single game. And that's kind of held true to this point. Um, and, but, you know, just we want to play a fast, aggressive style of defense. And, you know, we can recruit to it here located in Georgia where there's such great high school football and we're, you know, an hour and something changed from Florida and we're in South Carolina in 15 minutes. So there's a lot of guys that fit our system that we can recruit. And fortunately, we got a lot of them here right now, and we can continue to recruit those guys and hopefully play good defense moving forward. And two of those guys you have on the defensive side of the ball, Desmond Young, 6'1", 235-pound senior from Ironton, Ohio, and Walter Yates, 6'1", 220-pound sophomore from Gulf Breeze, Florida, two of your leaders on defense. Just talk about those two guys and some of your other key players on the okay. defensive side of the ball. Desmond's our leader on defense. He's a middle linebacker, super smart. Not the fastest guy, not the handsomest guy. We give him a hard time, but, uh, man, he's a smart football player and gets us in and out of a lot of stuff. He's a field general for us. And in our system, the linebackers, everything kind of gets funneled to them. Uh, Walter Yates, was uh, that actually in last year in the MEAC as a freshman led the league in, in tackles per game on everything. He averaged nine and a half a game. And he's a really good football player. And, and the guy we're fortunate to have here was a converted safety, which is kind of our MO here. We'll take a lot of linebackers and convert them oversized safeties. And I think he's got a chance if he continues to develop these next two, three years and be an NFL prospect. Um, and then we've got a corner that a lot of the NFL folks like right now. So we're fortunate to have some guys that can run, but those two guys have done a great job and been super easy to coach and, and a lot of fun to be around. And, you know, in this business, you want to spend you spend a lot of time here, a lot of hours, and you want to be around guys you enjoy being around. They're football savants, and they're in here watching film on their own a lot and, and love the game, and that makes a lot a lot of fun to coach them. Great, 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 excellent. Uh you're primarily a running team, so obviously when you go ones on ones, you see a lot, you do a lot of run run defense. But just talk about uh, getting ready for most teams that do run the spread option. Is is that a difficult thing to do, or if, you know, is it something that you just look? You know, ninety percent of the teams we have are going to run the spread, so we've got to make sure we got our scout team coached up to give us good looks against the spread. Just kind of talk about that. Uh, 
right there, Coach, on the defensive yeah, side. Yeah, you know, that presents a unique challenge, but we do pass Kelly. Our offense, the great thing, we have the flexibility to get in the gun and do some of the spread elements as far as the passing game. So they help us a lot in practice, and we do a lot of stuff against each other, to be honest with you. And our offense has been great about basically servicing us. And But, you know, there is it is a different, completely different style. Um, and so, you know, there is there's always a little bit of trepidation when you go into a game against a, a team that's completely different style than you are. And, you know, we huddle. Most teams don't. You know, it's just kind of a different way of doing it. Ironically, Albany State's pretty similar to us, the team we're playing this week. They're a run, run first, throw second team, and, and they do a really good job there. Um, but, you know, it, it presents its own set of challenges. But, we, you know, I think our guys have embraced the difference of it. And, you know, philosophically, it's just a different way of doing things. Um, like I said, it's what we believe in here. It helps us win and has kept us in a lot of football games. And um, the other day it was a great example. We I think we had a seven-minute drive there after they blocked the punt to kind of just e, you know, take the momentum back out in the air out of the stadium there and let us get back level-headed there. And uh, you got to be able to do that. And, um, you know, my experience doing this a lot of years playing in the SEC on the road, I remember at LSU, plenty of games on the road. We go in there and run the football at the end of the game and ice the crowd and take everybody out of it and just find a way to win. And so that's always stuck with me. And I said, if I got a chance to be a head coach, I wanted to run that same style system. Yeah, and, and, and it's something about running the ball. It seems like if you're able to run the ball effectively, you take the other team's spirit and the other team's soul away from them because it, it, it's so physical. You're just physically grinding and wearing them down. And two of the people on offense uh, that you have that just are wearing people out right now, running back D'Angelo Durham, a 6'1", 200-pound sophomore from right up the road in Augusta, Georgia, along with your quarterback, your uh, your uh, field general offense, Devon Gibbons, a 6'3", 205-pound junior from Stone Mountain, Georgia, Talk about those two guys, what they bring to you on the offensive side of the ball and any other key players that you have on offense, okay. Coach. Uh, D'Angelo's done a great job running the football from us. He's from Grovetown High School up in Augusta, which is a really good f- uh, high school program. And the big physical back we like. Um, and, you know, we've got a couple guys that are completely opposite style of him, you know, kind of yin and yang. But uh, he's the guy we try to go pound the football with, and, and he does a good job falling forward and, and has good vision. And, and then Devon has done a great job going from being a spread quarterback in a spread system um, and he's went into this system, and it's I, ironically he throws a football so much better than he did a year ago when he was in the different system. A, he got in the weight room and put on about 11, 12 pounds, but B, his arms got stronger. But also the throws that we ask him to make in this system are a lot more up his wheelhouse as far as his skill set, a lot of sprint out, a lot of one-sided throws, and, and he's done a nice job. And then he's cut his turnovers down a ton, and that's given us a chance to win some football games. But, you know, we got a host of guys that have really bought in on the offensive side. Um, we were one of the two worst offenses in all of Division FCS last year. I think we're 123 out of 124, and just the transition they've made from that system, that spread system to this, has been night and day, and, and they've just embraced it. I, I, I can't tell tell you how proud I am of the kids, and also appreciate the coaches coming in here because that was uh, that was it was not a lot of fun a year ago offensively, and, and we had our struggles, and to see the transformation, and we still got a long way to go. We're not even close to how we want to play. Although, you know, the other day our recipe worked. Was we rushed for 325 and held them to minus 5. And so if we can do that week in and week out, I think we're going to have a chance to win a lot of games. But, um, you know, I just really appreciate our, our players and our coaches buying in and, you know, hired a bunch of guys that were option guys and also – um, the kids have embraced it. And, you know, that can always be a tough going from, especially our wide receiver room, they're not catching the ball nearly as much. But when they do, it's usually a big big gainer because usually it's one-on-one and they're catching it for a lot of yards. But, uh, you know, I really appreciate the, our coaches and, and our players on how they bought into this system and this style to go win football games. All right. And you mentioned that you switched from FCS. Uh, you're down to the Division Two level. Obviously, yes, Division Two, small, smaller, smaller stadiums, a lot longer road trips on the Division Two level than you had on the uh, FCS level in the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. Just talk about in general the uh, switch from FCS to Division Two, the transition, and everything that has come along with that switch. What? Well, here's the irony of it. Our trips are way easier now because we're mostly in Georgia instead of playing in Delaware and places like that. I think for us it is a huge benefit to have gone from the MEAC to the SIAC because our travel is tremendously less. I'm talking about unbelievable. We've got eight games in the state of Georgia this year. So, 
I'd much rather go up to Atlanta than I would go to Delaware and places like that. And uh, as far as, you know, the attendance has been better, um, which has really been exciting. The SIAC led Division Two in attendance, and so we're actually, our crowds are bigger and better than they ever were in the MEAC. So it's really been, a, you know, what it could have been a negative has actually been a huge benefit to us. We're geographically aligned. We're in a conference where, we, you know, our resources are going to match up. You know, we've got to build a weight room and do some things on campus. We don't have an on-campus athletic weight room and things like that, but we've got some things in play here that give us a chance to win our league moving forward and, and also geographically to play as many games in as close proximity as we do. The, our trips are actually a lot less, believe it or not, and so that's been exciting and actually better crowds. So it's a win-win-win in every regard. Um, you know, obviously we'd love to have stayed Division One, but that, that train's – has left the station and you know we'll see what kind of success we can have over the next decade and maybe we can get back in division one ten years from now but right now we've got to we got to find a way to be successful in division two yeah and along with that uh, you've had reduction in scholarships uh, but that that's probably one of the main uh, one of the main I guess downgrades is the reduction of scholarships uh, you're not required to have as many varsity sports as you are on the uh, division one level but just kind of talk about that and any other things that have uh played it played into that transition from fcs into division two probably the toughest part was just the initial re- reduction from 63 to 30 um you know and our hope eventually to get back to 36 and be a fully fully funded uh division two right now we're under the number but uh that's probably was the biggest challenge and obviously there's some resources that you're available to your kids in division one from a uh, you know from the ncaa that they do that you don't get in division two but it's been a good move for us i think our fans are really excited because there's a lot of old rivalries a lot of old hatfield and mccoy rivalries playing fort valley and albany state and clark and morehouse and people that we've played for years benedict years and years and years and our fans just have seemed to relate a lot better to the opponents we're playing on our schedule now versus, you know, just truthfully a lot of the MEAC schools that were up north, there was no uh, common, you know, I don't know, rivalry with them, I guess is the best word to put it. So I, I think our fans are really excited. Um, I think it aligns us with a new athletic director to kind of reposition ourselves in this league and also just kind of some goals we've got to do with the facilities and some improvement for the student athlete welfare that's going to be able to do that with with some limitations we got with travel and things like that so i'm excited about it uh, you know a lot of folks weren't but i think it's been a good thing i think our players see the benefits of playing in georgia and just the the rivalries the regional stuff that we've got going forward and it's, it's been a lot of fun obviously we went to morehouse and we had over 5,000 fans there which was unbelievable um, in Atlanta, and so you know we had a monsoon Saturday, so we didn't have as many. But we've got great alumni base in Atlanta, and playing in Macon, and hopefully playing a bunch of games and classics in the state of Georgia moving forward will be a really good thing for our program and for our university. And some of those natural rivals within the state of within the state of Georgia include Morehouse and Clark Atlanta University in uh, in Atlanta, Albany State in Albany, Georgia. Fort Valley State in Fort Valley, Georgia, and come basketball season, Payne College in Augusta, Georgia, and then not too far down the road would be Benedict College in Columbia, yes, South Carolina. So there are a lot of opportunities for your fans within a three-hour drive or three, three and some change hour drive to see five, six different potential school rivals. And then there are there are a few other natural rivals uh Ever Waters is playing a football schedule, and I believe you guys face each other later on uh, yep. this particular season. So that that's another right down I ninety five, a little bit over two and two hours from you guys. So yeah, you're right. There are a lot of natural rivals that you're going to be able to create over the next five to ten years. That really should help put your uh, put your put your program in a, in a great position but uh just in general just talk about the, your new conference the SIAC and uh you know the 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 good the good of the conference and just just your observations in general with this uh conference well it's, it's a really good league and one of the exciting things is having an eastern and a western division having a championship game having some great rivalries and being in a large conference with a lot of good football teams the thing i've noticed is very athletic obviously just to be blunt, we're not nearly as talented as the majority of the teams are, that are in the league. From you know, we're not as big and as fast and as strong as a lot of the teams. So we know from a talent perspective, we've got a long way to go. 
Um, but I've been impressed with the league, and it's very well coached. Obviously, we're kind of getting in the meat of our schedule with the best teams that are, quote-unquote, on the schedule still ahead for us. But, uh, you know, we played Benedict, and they, they they were very well coached, played extremely hard, as did Morehouse. And, and like I said, Clark's a lot like us with a new staff just trying to, you know, put a new culture and a new way of doing things. And they're going to win there at Clark you, You'll over the next couple of years. I'll be interested to see. They'll, they'll improve a ton. And, uh, you know, so the league's really good. I don't know as much about the West because we haven't played anybody in the West, but obviously for us, just the geographic. No offense to Howard and schools like that, where they'd bring you know two, three hundred people, and now we're going to play in Albany State. That's going to bring four or five thousand fans. So it's going to be just for us, just a lot better deal. And when it comes to basketball, football, all our sports, it's just such a better deal for our fans and for for us, just with our travel. And uh, I think the league's got a bright future. You know, we've got a Nike deal. Uh, we've got some TV things in the works, and, and like I said, one of the advantages we had, we led the league and it led Division Two in attendance, and so our attendance is actually better than it was when we were in Division One. So that's exciting, and uh, so there, you know, it's a win-win-win. And in recruiting, we go head to head with a lot of the teams in this area regionally: the Valdosas, the West Georgias, the Albanies. And so our kids have a lot of name recognition when we recruit them because they are familiar with the teams that we're going to play versus. No offense, when we were playing some of the teams up north, they had no idea who those work guys were and had no affiliation with them. So I think moving forward it's going to be a good deal. And um, I've told our guys we've got to embrace it. And uh, so the league's really exciting. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, hopefully us becoming one of the powers in the east. But, you know, again, we got a long way to go. We're on, we're on the bottom looking up. But, uh, you know, to this point we've found a way to win some games and we just got to continue to fight and get better each week. He says he's on the bottom looking up, and he says he's not as talented as some of the other teams, but his record says it otherwise. They currently sit 4-3 and three overall, and they are tied atop of the SIAC Eastern Division at 3-0 and o within the conference, tied with Fort Valley State and this week's opponent, Albany State. Uh, both of those teams come in with a 5-2 and two record. Let's get into this game this weekend, Coach, uh, with, without going too deep into your game plan because we, we know that's uh, super secret, top secret stuff that coaches like to have. But uh, give us one or two keys to victory. If, if Savannah State does A or B or A, B, and C, they're going to win this game. What we got to win the coach? we got to win the rushing battle and the turnover battle. That's pretty critical because we're both very similar built. We're both running football teams with running quarterbacks that uh, you know they have an outstanding defense um, and they've got an outstanding offense and and they run the ball and they're committed to it like we are. And obviously, when you play teams that run the football, whoever can win the rushing battle and also the turnover battle. And generally, when you play another good football team, turnover is the turnover margin is usually the number one indicator. So we got to win those two phases, and if we do that. And, and play our style, we'll have an opportunity. Obviously, they're a lot more talented than we are right now, and we know that. we got to catch up in recruiting. And, you know, they're the model for our athletic department, how they're funded, their facilities, everything. We're trying to model ourselves after Albany State as far as a university and how we go about our athletic business because they're right now the, the, the Alabama of the East as far as how they're set up and their structure and things like that. And we're as we're restructuring ours and looking at things, they've been ones we've been trying to, you know, hey, they're doing it this way, let's, let's do it that way. And, and I know their head coach, and he does a great job. We work together at Charleston Southern and Gabe Gardenia. So um, we'll have to play our best football to have a chance to be in the game, let alone win it. And, you know, so it's a great challenge. I'm excited we're in a relevant game, you know, game eight of the year, which hasn't been the case here for a long, long time. So we're excited, and, you know, we just got to play our best ball and see where things go. Championship aspirations, obviously. Uh, this game would give you uh, – control of the SIAC East with a still a battle against Fort Valley to come. So uh, just, just talk about it. You're, you're ineligible for the Division II playoffs this particular year because of the transition, but what would a conference championship mean to you, this university, and your football team in your first year in the SIAC? Well, I'm not going to get the card ahead of the horse. We're just trying to get win five. But just winning in general is, is means a lot to our our alumni, to our players, to our former players, to our university. And, and you know, we're in a, a restructuring here of our university. And, frankly, the football team is a front porch university. And our job is to help save this school and 
increase its enrollment and do what has happened at North Carolina A&T and so many other schools I've been with. When you start winning in, in football, the enrollment goes up, the applications go up, the donations, the alumni come out, and uh, there's so many positives. And we're in a great city that's embraced us since we got here since day one. We're in, you know, I think the best city to recruit, no offense to Atlanta. we got a great city here, and if we can get guys here and we can create a winning culture, we're going to have a chance to sign every guy that comes in on campus here. And, uh, you know, we got some big goals ahead of us to build a facility for football and, and at our stadium and weight room and team meeting rooms and all that kind of stuff. And winning will help that. And, and we've got some really great alumni out there that are waiting to see what we're going to do. And, you know, anytime you can win a championship, I've been part of nine of them, and they're special. Every, those rings are always going to mean a lot. And having been, a, been on a bunch of championship teams and worked for some great head coaches, man, those memories last a lifetime. And my big thing is for these guys that haven't experienced a lot of winning here, winning is a lot of fun, and it, it makes all the hard work you put worthwhile. And so – I want it for the kids more than anything. And, again, as I told our team today, we've got a great challenge. We've wanted this opportunity, and here it is. And we've got a heck of a football team coming in here. And, you know, we got to play our best to have a chance to compete with these guys. And we're here with Sean Quinn on the Versus Sports Simulator hotline. A.D. Drew speaking with Coach Sean Quinn. We're going to get you out of here, uh, Coach. You know, you got a lot of game planning to go and do. And, uh, you know, I, I will be there covering the game live for the – for the BCS in this particular weekend, assuming that I can get a parking space because it is uh, it is homecoming. So if you're planning on getting to the game, obviously make sure that you get there early. Know there's going to be some 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 heavy traffic there in this in this particular game because yep. it is homecoming. Well, they're but, thinking uh, it's going to be the largest crowd in 20 years, so we're excited and they're bringing supposedly extra stands in and everything. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be they'll bring a great crowd. We'll have a tremendous crowd there. In fact, we've about sold out all our tickets here, so it'll be a bunch of fun. And I'm excited for our kids and our university that we got this opportunity. And I, I and I am so much looking forward to this particular. Uh, game coach that kicks off at 3 p.m. Eastern time on at Theodore Wright Stadium. But before, before we get out of here, coach, is there anything else that you want to bring out about your program, about your university, about your players, uh, anything else that you want to bring out uh, here? Coach? Well, we, we, we got a heck of a place. Our, and, I, you know, winning is really important to us, and it's been a lot of fun. But the thing I'm most proud of, our guys have done over 1,500 hours of community service here. We vowed to win back our city because this, you know, a lot of Georgia fans, a lot of Georgia Southern, Georgia Tech fans, I told them they can all be Tiger fans. But uh, our guys are in the community here every week doing a ton of community service, and we've got a mentoring program where we take young men in the schools here and our guys partner up and become their mentors. And I'm as proud of that as anything we've done since I've been here and uh, excited to see the impact over that the coming years from doing that and being involved with the young people here in town with our guys. And it's been a lot of fun, and I'm very appreciative of our players, how they've bought into the culture. And, you know, we try to do here what we did at LSU and at, at Tennessee and at Georgia Southern and all the places that are, quote, unquote, bigger about winning and doing it the right way and having fun in the process. So I'm really proud of our players, and I appreciate our administration giving me the opportunity to, to be the head coach here. So it's been a lot of fun. And when you get down here, make sure you come eat some great food. You won't leave here empty empty with that. So it's, uh, it's a great place to eat and live and hang out. So you'll enjoy yourself Saturday. All uh, right. And a rivalry reborn. Savannah State, Albany State, once again, Savannah, Georgia, Theodore Wright Stadium. That game's going to begin at 3 p.m. Eastern time as Savannah State tries to become the the champions of the state of Georgia when it comes to the uh, HBCUs in Georgia, having earlier defeated Morehouse and Clark Atlanta University. They're at home for the first time this year playing another Georgia school, so go out. And, su- and support Coach Quinn and those Savannah State Tigers. Coach, I want to thank you for your time this afternoon. I want to thank your staff. I look forward to see- seeing you guys over there this Saturday. Hopefully I'll get a chance to check out the boardwalk uh, over there in, in-, in Savannah. So, uh, so uh, I'm j- just looking forward to what's going to be a great, great, great matchup. Uh, Albany State Rams travel to Savannah State homecoming this particular Saturday. Once again, Coach Quinn, thank you. This is A.D. Drew for the Black College Sports Network Sports Rap Show, and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Go Tigers. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks so much.
It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get 